Welcome back to the channel. We've got a book review. Uh, well, we'd say books, magazine, same, same. bookazine, book review, magazine, whatever you want to call it. This time we're looking at the Weathering Aircraft magazine uh, with my favourite camo pattern on the front uh, with the blue tones and the weathering. Perfect. Um, big fan of Russian jets, big fan of uh, Russian colours. Um, yeah, this is, I, that's all I can say. I mean, uh, obviously, if we went to war with them, I wouldn't be such a huge fan, but um, we're not going to go to war with them. I've digressed completely already. So, anyway, we're going we're gonna to look at this. Um, these are a great set of magazines. Uh, they come in different languages. Um, this one's obviously English. There'd be no point in me buying a Chinese one at all. Um, and uh, they're packed with information. Um, and it's also got some great stuff there. 15 years. It's a lovely cover that is for me. Um, just an advert on the back for luckymodel.com. Um, yeah, so that's that. Anyway, before we go over and have a look at that in detail, it's just something I need to quickly address. Um, I was on um, International Scale Modelers channel. I was their guest interview on Friday Just Gone. And uh, we'd done a little sketch at the beginning where I come down in a lift, uh, the lift breaks down and so on and so forth. Some people uh, have actually Seem to seem to think that that actually was happened. It was real. Um, it was real in the sense, yeah, it did happen, but not in the sense that the lift broke down. At no point was the lift broken. Um, at no point was I ever going to climb out. It was just an illusion. I was just making it meant to look as though I was going to climb out. Um, there were some things that didn't happen that were supposed to happen and other things that weren't supposed to happen that did happen. I'm not going to go into depth into it. Needless to say, if the things that did happen that weren't supposed to happen, um, then given the amount of people that thought it was real, I would probably be on charges of pet cruelty now. Um, because uh, basically we've got a stuffed toy dog and we were going to suspend that from beneath the uh, lift and make it look like the lift had squashed the dog um, but we took that out at the last minute and uh, it was just meant as a bit of fun um, to get a laugh I was not humiliated or coerced or anything like that um, I just done it because I like to uh, I like to have a laugh and a joke and uh, it's, it's a great thing um, you know, it it just adds something. Uh, you know, it adds something to every, everything that's going on. Everyone just relaxes when they start laughing, and it's a great way to start a show. And uh, I believe the viewing figures support that. It was a great show indeed. Not because I was in it, but just uh, you know, it just just went really well. So that's that. It was um, just a joke. Right. If you don't get jokes or you don't like jokes, then I apologise. Um, yeah, that's it. I just apologise. Sorry. Okay. So let's go over to the bench. Uh, switch on the overhead camera, and uh, let's go from there. Stop that. And now we've got this running, I believe. Although I don't see any. I haven't got any digits going over. Um, now then, the thing is, do I believe it says record? So do I believe it's recording? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. So this basically is uh, one of the Weathering Aircraft magazines. It is made by Mig. Ammo Mig. Um, everyone knows it's a reputable brand. Brand, brand. I said bland, then didn't I? It's reputably right. 
start again it's late it's late start again right so here we go uh, the cover is um, a very glossy finish it's a high quality finish to it um, it definitely doesn't feel like a cheap magazine I was put off by the price of these when I first looked at buying them and I can safely say that once I got my first one I'd, uh, all, uh, um, all worries went out the window it's got a price of 9 euros on it it's about it's, uh, it's still about I think 7.99 in the UK at the moment and it's available from many good uh, suppliers um, sadly I haven't yet seen it in places like WH Smiths anywhere like that um, but generally I haven't really seen it in my local hobby store uh, but if you know somebody uh, most of us know um, either Veteranus models they will definitely be able to get you a copy Mike Jolly would definitely be able to get you a copy so you know they're the places you go for things like this so anyway let's go through so the, you got the forward there by um, Javier Lopez de Anca um, and a picture of uh, no that's a real life uh, Heliocopter, or as the Americans call them, choppers. And then on the first page, we've got the index. So we've got a camouflage rocket because you don't want to see one of them coming at you. Um, and then we've got the JU Junkers 88A4, the SBD5 Dauntless, the SU33 Flanker D. Yes. Oh look at that, the FA-18F Super Hornet, the Vigan, the P the Flaz D13 and Camouflage Lozenge. And then we've got a picture of um, an aircraft woman very nice, very nice plane. Somebody's masked off the uh, spindle there. Looks like it's got loads of masking tape wrapped around it. Is this a model? Is this a model that's been somehow enlarged? Hmm, not sure. We've got masking tape there. She's definitely been superimposed on the top. Anyway. So then we go over and we start to get into the meat and potatoes of it all. It's all about camouflage. I'm guessing, I haven't read this, so you're seeing it the very first time the same as me. Um, so I'm guessing this is going to be the history of uh, the camouflage pattern. And our first kit is the Tacon 135th V2 rocket. Um, and it's showing you step by step how to achieve that fantastic camouflage pattern with the various um, we've, we've got uh, we're using mainly MIG products this time uh, the last one I had of these he wasn't uh, or they were not afraid to come forward and use other products not only MIG products so um, I'm hoping that's still the same. There's a lot of MIG products at the moment, but then we've got Microset, Microsol there, and we've also got some matte lac down here. I've not tried the matte lac. I believe Paul Bretland has, and some other people have. I'm not sure if he's got a review up on it or not, so uh, pop on over to ISM's channel, or just trying to think who else will have used it at this stage um, I think Norman might have and maybe Simon Jones so Jedi scale modeler and oh Norman 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 what is your what is your tag your right I don't know what it is I can't remember disaster 
disaster has struck. Um, I'm frantically going through YouTube in the background and I'm looking for <laughs> I'm just writing Norman in the search bar. So we've got Norman Wisdom, Norman Readers, Norman Finkelstein. <laughs> Norman Fink you're not many of them are you? Um, I can't spend the whole of the video looking for Norman's channel. I can't remember what it is. Oh dear. Right, it might just be his name. Only I can't remember his second name. Right, sorry Norm. I'll add it in the details if I can find it out before the video goes up. So, Matt Lack. Um, great. Um, so, and then we've got the Junkers 88. I believe that's what that stands for, Junkers. Um, and that's a Revel 172nd kit. And we've got some... Uh, not too keen on this, this uh, pattern, but, uh, you know... Here we are, we've got some, uh, yeah, yeah, see we're using the Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner, Mr. Hobby Colour, so, yeah, he's not afraid to demonstrate uh, other people's uh, products, which is good, it's good, normally when a company does this, they, they don't, they stick with their own brand because they want to push that as much as they can, I remember doing this pattern myself, because uh, I remember masking it off, it's, Fairly easy pattern. That was on the BF110 that I'd done that uh, pattern. This is the JU. So we've got the old clad 2. Now then, that is, that's aqua gloss. Um, there's a lot of issues surrounding old clad at the moment. Um, in particular, the gloss is not too bad as far as I'm aware. However, this stuff I had problems with. Now, this is the light sheen, and it's mainly the fact that it uh, reactivates so easily, so it never, it doesn't really dry. Um, the minute you put something over the top of it, it sort of reactivates again. Um, now, I know very little about this. Uh, I've only used it once, and it was not a very good experience. And it, that was my experience of it reactivating. Um, I'm not saying that it's rubbish because I haven't used it anywhere near enough to um, come to that conclusion. What I'm saying is before you buy it look into it a bit further and see what uh, the professionals are saying about it, the people that use it the most and, uh, and then make your decision just don't go and blindly buy it. Um, I bought this by mistake, I'd ordered Aqua Gloss and they didn't have any so they sent me this instead. Um, there you go, so that's that. You uh, get a little indicator there of what pressure to set your... Um, or to, to set your um, compressor at. And we've got some pictures without oils, and I guess, and that wing is with oils, so I don't know, can we can we tell if there's a difference? Let's just zoom in and see, can we tell if there's a difference? I don't know, can you tell? I guess the green's darker, yeah, there's, there's a different colour hue to the greens. Yeah, yeah, there's a slight difference there. So that's interesting, it's worth uh, bearing in mind. And we've got some brushing going on there. Very delicate use of oils and, and various other washes and that. Um, I think I tend to fall in the same trap as anyone else. Uh, you can't see, you put it on so much to see a visible. Uh, a visible striking difference that um, 
you you go too far. Uh, when I when I used to take photographs for a living, the the in thing at the time was high dynamic range photography, um, and there was uh, people loved it. They loved the uh, the vivid colours that were brought out, and uh, there's this uh, technique where if you overdo your HDR you get these this high contrast in the image and it really looks great on certain images um, brick walls tend to benefit from it sky with cloud tend to benefit from it um, but the thing is people started believing that that was true HDR photography well that isn't true HDR photography you shouldn't really um, have all that contrast in it. it it's just a technique it's HDR technique which has been used excessively it's been overused to get that result and I, I think the same thing applies with um, weathering in some in some respects not with everyone but in some respects so then we come on, we've got the SBD5 Dauntless Nitrometer, it's 130 second kit, so nice size. And uh, we're already, we're not concentrating on the build here by the looks of it, it's all, um, oh, I missed something, one, no, no, it's, uh, so we're starting with the planes built up. And it's taking you again through the steps. And my favourite, the one, the reason I bought this particular magazine was this, the Flanker D. Beautiful, beautiful um, kit. Using MRP paint there, I notice. Shall have to order myself some of those, especially for this. And uh, I think there probably should be a turquoise colour in there for the cockpit. But I'm not certain on that. I think they normally have turquoise in their cockpits as a rule. Beautiful colouring. And underneath it's... Uh, really is amazing. I like that. I like that a lot. I've got some engine oil going on there, which I do have, so that's handy. Now, this one. This is a new favourite. Look at that. Isn't that tremendous? That is going to be a ball lake, I should imagine. So, I'm trying to figure out... Oh, there's... No, nah, it's not painted on, I thought it was. Um, I'm not going to call it cheating, because that is going to be an absolute headache. Um, I don't, it's probably not possible to paint, well I suppose it is possible to paint it on, but um, there is going to be some painting. That looks beautiful, I'd love to have a go at that. Love to have a go at that. Leave for two days. So we're putting the what's that he's got in there? He's smoothing. The, oh, this is a wash he's putting on, like a slush wash. And he's leaving it for two days. Um, do you say how he's mixed that up? Yes. So where are we at? Number 28. Letting the model dry for a couple of days we applied Tamiya Semi-Gloss Varnish X35 to seal the camouflage. Then we had a wash with a mixture of black, white and burnt sienna oil paint over all the surface. So there's, we'll be mixing a wash up. Then we have the Vigor Tarangus 148 scale. Um, Ivan and Paul built this last year and their, their um, kits were on the ISM stand. I believe they're going to be displayed this year. I think Ivan's is going to be displayed. I'm not certain though. 
and pools maybe. Um, yeah, brilliant looking kit. I've even done a really good job on it. And uh, and if if you don't get to see it at uh, Telford this year. Um, then certainly pop on over to Ivan's channel and, and have a look at that build because uh, it really is something and that is Ivan's Northern Modeler still no luck with norms uh, it hasn't popped into my head yet oh, we've got some different uh, paints going on here I've never seen those before they look as though they've come out of Arabia, somewhere like that. Got some nice colourings going on there. Yeah, I'm going to give that a go one day myself. And then we've got the Flaz D13, a Wingnut Wings kit. So, um, yeah, Wingnut Wings, if. Um, you're a fan of their kits, uh, then you need to go and see Tim at uh, Tim's Desk London uh, or Tim's London Desk or whatever it is at the moment. Uh, he's got uh, fantastic uh, builds with wing nut wings, and uh, we now call him Tim Nut Wings sometimes, so that should give you an idea of uh, the level of his knowledge when it comes to that. Some great uh, information there on achieving some of them lozenge details. Beautiful, beautiful uh, work there. And then we've got Blurred Wings Camo Lozenge Camouflage and how to achieve it You're going to have to use sheets for that, decals for that, I'm afraid. There's no way you're going to be able to manage. But it looks like they're painting on their own um, swastikas there, by the looks of it, in some way. Oh, not swastika, sorry, that's the Iron Cross. They're making the iron cross there. And then we come on to the back pages, which are basically just an advert for a book club, which I did mention to. Two more books for pound. Mm. Look at that, and, and then uh, what we've got next year, the next issue. Sorry, I uh, don't know when that's out. And we've got a cockpit there. Um, I'm not sure what it's a cockpit of. I'm sure somebody else in the uh, comments will be able to tell us. And there we go, the Mirage on the back. So a beautiful book, We're packed with information packed with stunning photographs, um, extremely worthy of the $7.99 price ticket. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this magazine review. All that's left for me to say is uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, bye for now. Cheerio.